One newborn, one four-year-old, fast asleep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you are the man. And you are definitely the woman. <laughs> Come on. You have, what, ten minutes before one of our kids wakes up? What are you talking about, Mr. Snyder? Uh, what I'm talking about is you got to stop fluffing. <laughs> and then... Mm -hmm. Nobody's home. I was on my way too late somewhere with Katie, and I, and I saw your lights were on, and I thought, I thought maybe Sage would be awake. You know what? I, I'll come by another day. It's fine. No, great. No, it's no, great no, no, no. Sage is asleep, but you don't have to run off. Jack will get you a beer, won't you, sweetheart? Well, well. A late supper with Katie. About time, Kazan, huh? I was wondering if you were ever going to make your move. Oh, come on, you stupid corkscrew. Mike. No, not yet. Are you busy? No, I'm just uh, trying to prepare a dinner for Mike that is a lot harder than it seems in the stupid cookbook, and my house is a mess, and I can't get started. That's not I have to be a grown up, and I have no idea how. Please help me, can you, before I just totally ruin my life. I should never have left it. Not from you, man. I should never have left it. it. It wouldn't have made a difference. Is everything all right? Did something happen to Bob? Well, he was coming around. I heard he was making progress. He was talking. He had his eyes open. He was trying to talk to us. I I'm so sorry. If there's anything I can do. Rick says there's nothing anybody can do. Rick was with him when it happened. Tom, I have to call Tom. This is so sad. Bob was doing so well. Oh, darling, you must be devastated. And I was so sure that he was improving. After being taken off his case and then reinstated. I've got a lot to prove. You don't have anything to prove. Ben is the primary care physician. Please, Ben, he walks on water around here. Was he with you when, uh, when Bob relapsed? So you're the only one who, who knows what really happened? I'm afraid so. Well, you better tell me exactly what you did. trying to tell me about Rick. Are you protecting Rose from Dusty? Because that's crazy. You know, they betrayed you. They deserve each other. That's true, but they don't deserve to be happy. You know you can't control someone's happiness. Oh, yes, I can. As long as there is guilt in this world, I can. And you forget, I know Rose. I know her very well. You have a plan, don't you? Oh, yeah. And it's it's a beauty. Really, it's very simple. There's no bribes or kidnapping or anything like that. Just a lot of pretend sadness, you know, with me with my lower lip quivering. And, and a lot of understanding from the injured party. And that will what? That will remind Rose how she and Dusty hurt me. I'm going to make Rose feel so guilty that she won't even hold Dusty's hand. That's your plan? Paul, you forget. I've met the man. And there is no way a little thing like guilt is going to keep your ex-fiancé out of his bed. I told you, I can't, I can't do this. What is this? I'm talking about making love. I'm talking about taking this energy that we have between us and seeing what it's all about. I just need a little time. He really got to you, didn't he? What, what line of garbage did Paul feed you down there in the dining room? It wasn't a line. Whatever it was, it must have been good. Good enough to kill any heat that we had going uh, just on. Just back off. Okay, just back off for a second. Paul wasn't playing a game. He was real. He was devastated and upset and vulnerable. And we made him that way. I 
is good. He's yanking your chain and you don't even see what? it. No, you got it all wrong. No, he doesn't want me back. He wants me to be happy. Then why is he turning you into a fool? Don't call me a fool. All right, well, stop acting like one. You know, Paul's manipulating you. Why can't you see this? No. He wouldn't do it. How do you know? He's the son of Barbara Ryan and James Stenbeck. He comes from a very dirty gene pool. Do you know how hard he works not to be like those parents? He's got to work on it at all. It should tell you something, shouldn't it? I mean, come on. Tell me that you really believe that he wants to see you happy. He does. On whose terms? Does he want to see you happy with me? If there's something that you're not seeing, that Paul, he's gone. The Paul that was confident and preppy, he's gone. And if this is the way of him coming back here and trying to make things right by telling me that he wants me to be happy, maybe it is. I don't know. But I can tell you one thing. Looking at him, looking at him in the face, it just breaks my heart. Then don't look at him. What are you talking about? How, how do I do that? I was engaged to him. I loved him. Do you know how many times he bailed me out in horrible times in my life? And how do I repay him for that? I ruined his life. Come on, listen to what you're saying now. Listen to what you're saying. This guy's making you feel like a sinner every time you're around him. The way I treated him? That was a sin. It was wrong. Mm. How we feel is wrong. That we did about it. What we did about it. That was wrong. What did we do? We haven't done anything. The mistakes that you and I have made regarding this boy are over. They're in the past. We are here in the now. And you got a choice to make. What? What are you talking about? You got to choose who's going to be the man in your life. Paul or me? What Rose feels for Dusty now is, is temporary. Come on, don't kid yourself. Hey, I got to her, Jen. I did. I got Rose just for a second to remember what it felt like to be in love with me. And now she's conflicted. You know what you're doing to Dusty and Rose is the same thing that Mom did to you. Whose side are you on? Yours, but you you hate Mom for what she did to you, and well, I don't want to see you hating yourself. Okay, do you, do you remember... Do you know what it feels like to be betrayed by somebody that you love? And, and we're just supposed to take it? Like, is it okay for somebody to take all of your love and just throw it away when somebody new comes along? No, it's not. You know, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that nobody ever hurts or manipulates you ever again, Jen. You or Will, I'm not gonna go for it. I'm, I'm not gonna let Dusty or Rose and particularly Barbara ever hurt us again. Which is why... I want you and Will to move in with me. Come on, you know Mom will allow that. Well, I'll take care of that. Tess. Is this a private party or can anyone join? Yep. Park your broomstick by the door and pull up a chair. I won't well, make my move. Kate and I are just friends. That's, that's all oh, we want to be. please. What? I saw the glances between you two in Montana, and if Jack looked at a friend like that, I'd pluck his eyeballs out of his skull. You and Jack are together, all right? Kate, Katie's still hung up on Simon. Okay, here's the deal. I will fix your love life, and you leave when Jack is I don't want you fixing my love Katie life. Katie loved a man who turned out to be a dog, and you fell in love with a little girl who turned out to be somebody else's daughter. You guys need each other. You know what, just because you and Jack are loving life here in Cozyville doesn't mean that everybody wants to be like that, okay? No, that's true. Not everybody does. But you do. So why don't you bring along a bottle of champagne on this late night supper and we'll see which one of us is right. It's one of those microbreweries in Chicago. You shouldn't that guy's pretty that's good. That's right. Thanks, Jack. I gotta go. up with him? No. I think he just developed a taste for champagne. 
So then I dumped Chris before he could dump me, only I wish that I hadn't, and now I want him back. So tell him you're sorry. Huh? Allison, you're not a baby. Chris shouldn't be expected to have to watch your every move, especially now. His father could be dying, Allison. He needs a friend. And I made this whole thing about me. I'm such a jerk. It's okay. So fix it. How? Just let Chris know that he can have space and mean it. Let him know that as soon as he needs you, you'll still be waiting. Wow, that sounds so mature. I wish that... What? That I was more like you. I bet you never had to chase Simon around. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. You have no idea how much I had to chase him. And if you're looking for advice on how to keep a guy, I'm definitely not your best role model. Katie, why do you say that? You got him. You totally won. Oh, really? Then where is he, Allison? Where's my husband? There wasn't much I could do for him, Susan. He was, was conscious in a second and then in a coma the next. I mean, a CAT scan may show that he, he had a stroke. He was anxious and disoriented when he woke up. I mean, what appeared to be a recovery might have been just the momentary firing of his neutrons. That's what I was afraid of. Well, you know how it is with post-stroke patients. I mean, what appears to be a, a miracle is just you know, the last few sparks from a dying brain. Oh. Well, you better figure out a way to break it to Kim. I'll be right here. Pop, Pop, Dad just spoke. What no, did he no, say? No. He, he slipped back in a coma. Just one word, just one word. Oh, so what did he say? Rick. And he was upset when he said it. Now, why do you think that is? Your father called my name because I'm his doctor, Chris. No, it wasn't like that. He sounded desperate. Well, he... He probably knew that he was in danger. I should have been there with him. There's also the possibility of aphasia. Besides being disoriented from waking up, he could have been confusing his words, saying Rick when he meant something else. No, no, he looked me right in the eye. He wasn't confused. I I'm not going to stand here and listen to this. I'm going back to your father. Maybe you'll wake up. Maybe you'll talk to us again. I'll keep an eye on him. So will I. Next time I uh, agree to become the personal physician of the chief of staff, throw a bucket of water in my face. Oh, no, you did everything right. Bob wouldn't even be here if it hadn't been, if you hadn't come to Memorial. We talk about something else. Something fun. <laughs> well, there's always our wedding. We haven't set a date. You mean it? You still want to be my wife? Of course, why wouldn't I? I don't know, I... Just that I'm... Well, I mean, with Bob relapsing, I'm... I'm not uh, feeling very worthy right now. Oh, are you serious? You are the most wonderful, incredible man I know. No, I'm not. I'm sorry, Katie. I shouldn't have brought Simon up. It's okay. Nobody else even mentions him. Like my big, huge mistake never happened. You know, everyone tried to tell me that people never change, but I just hoped that maybe if I loved him... It... It's okay, though. Now I know what I'm doing. <laughs> you okay? No. My husband's gone, my veal isn't more solid, and I still can't open this stupid bottle of wine. There's one thing that I learned in jail, it's that nothing ever stays the same. And things do change. They do get better. You know, you're a lot closer to being a grown-up than you think. I have a great role model. And I...
I have a rabbit. You know, I'm not going to sit here and let you bait Mom. Jennifer, would you mind stopping in and checking on your little brother? Just see how he's doing. I bet he'd love a visit from you. Sure. Tell you what, I'll just stay here and be a good little boy. Will you be? A good little boy? Good little boys don't take children away from their mothers. Oh, you overheard my plan. To have Will and Jennifer move in with you. Yes, I did. And I can't understand how you could possibly be so cruel to your mother after everything that she has been through. Oh. Come on, Paul. Why do we have to be enemies? Oh, well, it's a little late for us to be friends, don't you think? Okay, then you tell me what I can do, all right? Tell me what I can do. Make it up to you. Forgive me. What do I do? Really? Anything? Do you want Will and Jen to have a happy, stable home? Yes, of course, that's all I well, want. Well, then it's settled. They'll move in with me. I mean, I'd invite you, too, but that would be like, like asking the crocodile to play in the kiddie pool. You make one move. And you'll what? What did you do? Destroy my life? You tried that already. And I survived. Paul is not trying to manipulate you or me. He's just... He's just trying to be decent. He sent his sister up here to stop us. From whatever it is that we're doing here. Because he knows that once we get a taste of it, there's no turning back. Stop. Stop. You stop. You stop running to Paul, letting him come between us. You gotta stop feeling guilty because you don't love him anymore. I never said I didn't love him. Okay. Are you still in love with him? Because if you are, tell me now. <laughs> 